it was admittedly more of a reflective opportunity for us to talk about all the data that we have. Uh, now we have many combinations of therapy. Uh, some of them are approved, some of them could be approved. And of course, it was time to really pause and just reflect about all the data. So if anything, uh, uh, we know very well about, of course, the atezolizumab plus bevzumab remain a robust standard of care therapy. Dervalumab is again another robust uh, standard of care therapy, which has really almost great tolerance and at the same time limited toxicity, uh, at least by our hands, our experience. We have an opportunity to reflect on the Camerizumab plus Rovacerinib, which is yet to really get approval, but we know very well the data showed the improved survival 22 months. And this is really where the pause is, because we've been talking about those three studies, thinking that maybe the hepatitis B favor the response to the checkpoint inhibitors. And at the same time, we have seen, for example, with the Rovacerinib plus Camerizumab, with 75% of patients with Hep B survival went above the 22 months. And out of the left field now, we have the Ipilumab, Nivolumab, with only about 35 patients with Hep B, but survival is 23 months. Same, no doubt, time is to reflect on all that data. We're awaiting for that paper to see what the data will show us more in details as well. However, with all of this, could it be that that last point that I brought up maybe is telling us maybe there are other variables beside the hepatitis B that can play a role? Of course, the immune microenvironment is more complex than that. And actually at ASCO, as you know, uh, proudly, same like many other efforts, we're proud to really uh, present the uh, uh, trial in progress data on the LIVMO plus uh, Buji, which is more of a NTPD1 plus a TGF beta. And we'll see where this one takes us. This is an effort, same like many others, are very much needed so we can prove further on survival as we know. And we're very happy here at uh, ESMO GI to talk about that we have, for example, on the Dervalumab, Termalumab, four years survival, 25%, numbers that we never heard of. But it was an opportunity also to sadly reflect in a kind of more thoughtful way about the globality of the issue we have. Because as we know, in Africa, which has one of the highest incidence of liver cancer in the world, the immune survival is three months. We did a study, we probably published in JCO Global Oncology, and after evaluating uh, our colleagues who are physicians, healthcare workers in the continent of Africa about their access to care, only an average of 5% of them had access to checkpoint inhibitors. So something to really think of. How can we fix that? How can we sort it out? Of course, we're not gonna cry over it. We're actually working very closely with the colleagues in Africa. And if anything, we're trying to build models where exchange of tissue, exchange of data from Africa or anywhere else in the world has to be at the price that we're gonna pay back with that price for our patients wherever they are to make sure that everybody gets the right care and the necessary care.